the crank pulley bolts really tight. I had to use a pry bar. The strap, my strap would only do so much, but there's where we ended up. Uh, he torqued it at 37 foot pounds. He's supposed to back it off one full turn. Torque it to 89 foot pounds, I think. Back it off one full turn. Torque it to 37, and then turn it 90. Um, but you run the risk of the chain jumping if you turn the motor backwards ever so slightly, especially with a, a tensioner that's not pumped up. This chain tensioner has no oil in it. So the 37 and the 90 degrees is plenty good. That thing is tight, I'm here to tell you. key to this operation is to not let that belt turn square against the pulley. It needs to be twisted like this. So it's got to be twisted all the way around and back around so it won't shred itself because we, gotta, we want it to flop up onto the pulley here. So the trick is to get this really twisted to where the ribs are facing out. zip tied right there and then we're on cut the zip tie and continue to roll it around So there is the belt. It is on the ribs and on the pulley there. Um, you know, the key to this thing is um, you've got to have the belt with the ribs facing you. You've got to be facing away from the engine. And uh, you don't want it to get twisted behind in here. So you put your zip tie up here with the ribs facing out but the big point is you want these facing out too as much as possible it helps keep this belt from twisting behind the pulley here so the zip tie is a third hand basically so you can use this hand to hold the belt this way as you crank it around with the uh, the breaker bar the you know whatever tool you want to use to to spin this motor until it starts flopping on then you can let it go when you get your zip tie at six o'clock you can cut it but under no circumstances do you want to turn this engine backwards uh, that would be bad news you might get lucky but it's a possibility it could mess with the time and change jump time anything of that nature
So I'm putting this trap back together and everything's running pretty smooth, plugging right along. And then we ran into an issue. Um, something that just couldn't be overlooked, you know. It was, uh, I don't know what happened, but uh, anyway, the blow off valve was broken. It was broken before I got the truck, but it, you know, I couldn't let it go. I had to fix it. You have all kinds of problems down the road. It'd be much more difficult to get to down the road. But what we're looking at is, <clears throat> let's see here, I'm kind of facing backwards. This is a right hand turbo. And there's a, this is a bl blow off valve for the intake. Keep from getting compressor surge when you slam the throttle shut. <clears throat> I've got the cover off of it. So this is the cover. So this little vacuum nipple here, get this where you can see it, was broken off and sticking into the vacuum line. And it's got a real, the vacuum line has a real hard 90 degree bend and <clears throat> puts a lot of pressure on it. So I took this off and I made up this little guy here to put it in a vise so I could work on this thing and I filed a slot in this and I uh, created a slot in this and glued them together and put a paper clip in here to keep the, the vacuum pour from getting full of uh, glue and it's like new <clears throat> better than you actually the glue we use is some crazy strong stuff as accelerant spray I think I don't know if you can even buy this piece separate from the turbo. The work manual shows that you can replace it separate from the turbo for some reason, but I don't know. So <clears throat> anyway, that goes right there. And that's the actual vacuum line. And you see it's sticking out straight and it's got to actually curve like that. I'm going to put a curly cue. I'm going to extend that vacuum line and make it to where it doesn't put so much pressure on this. <clears throat> and let's put it back together. So basically when this valve opens, <clears throat> we're just taking and allowing the air to circulate from here back around and it just gives it a path instead of backing up into the air cleaner and making that boom, 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 boom noise when you let off the throttle under hard boost conditions. So you can see how this, you know, it's relaxed right now. If we bring it around to try to plug it to this, I mean, it puts it in a pretty good bind. So we'll put a curly cue on that.
We got the motor all reassembled, all the plumbing on it, everything in its proper place. Uh, as far as the intake here, charge here, all that good stuff. The one thing I like to do, perspectives change. Uh, so looking at this right now, as compared to looking at it when that is surrounding it, can be totally different. So one thing I like to do before I reassemble is I like to do a kind of a, a connector count. All right, so we got one connector here, for the ABS model. We've got these two connectors here. All right, to go down to the tail lights and all that mess. We got a vacuum line for the four-wheel drive and the ABS sensor. So basically, we've got. Uh, one, two, three, four, four, five, five things over here to hook up. And there's a few more, but here we got to hook those up. And the passenger side's got more connectors. That's where your majority of your connections are. So we've got you know, transmission PCM, so that's two. We've got our ABS connector. Uh, we've got a vacuum reservoir. And this is where it can get kind of confusing. There's not a lot here, but it's, it's kind of, the way it's routed, it's kind of, you know, you can get lost, you can forget to disconnect something. So we've got a positive cable, and then we got the connection to the battery junction box. Done. Simple. We've got this connection here. We've got our generator, you know, battery clamp, checking the amperage negative battery cable and then our two grounds and that's it about a bing about a boom but if we see them here once once they're under the hood man it's just it lays everywhere and it's easy to maybe overlook something and you don't want the truck to get out into the customer's hands with something disconnected